Let them know who you are, big boy. Big U. Or AKA Eugene Henley. <laughs> Hannibal. Hannibal. <Anybody>. Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Whole lot of that. Hannibal was a name that was given to me by um, Captain Malik of the Nation of Islam. Well, this might have been about 87, 88. We was all in the hood and we uh, we had heard that the Great Streets was coming to the Nation of Islam Temple on uh, Western, was Temple 27 on Western and 46. And at the time, we was kind of like, you know, having scrimmages with the Grape Streets and all the dudes, all the Compton and Watts at World on World Skating. So when we heard they was coming over there to meet with the Nation of Islam, we got together, the call went out, and at the time, this was before there was page. It was no, it was pages only. This was before there was cell phones and um, all this different communication that they have now. So when we got the call, it went throughout the hood. So we went to. We was probably about 70, 80 deep. All the homies rolled to 46 and Western and jumped out. So the brothers from Nation of Islam was like, man, y'all can't do that over here now. Y'all not gonna disrespect us and have these cats in our neighborhood. You know what I mean? So we was at a, 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 a standoff. And so at the time, Captain Malik, um, um, who was it, Captain Malik? It was um, Khalik, Khalik Muhammad, rest in peace. This when I first met Khalik Muhammad. Um, Captain um, um, Shahid and uh, Malik. And they was, running the, they was running the mosque at the time. And they came out and they was talking to us and they was like, you know, who, 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 who running this? And I'm like, ain't nobody, we ain't got nobody running it. It's just that right now, you know, I'm, I'm the one you talking to right now. So from that point, they uh, uh, they was hunting me down. After we, we came to understanding it, that wasn't gonna be no good look for them to go in there. And not in our neighborhood, you know. So they ended up not going in. We ended up coming to a medium. Later on, we met with them later on with the next visit line. And so they started pursuing me real hard. And I had already been studying Islam. I was kind of raised in Islam with my uncles from a baby. Well, I actually was raised in Islam from a baby. And uh, so it was, it was natural for me to just kind of still connect back to it. So going down the line, Khalid Muhammad, I mean not Khalid, but uh, uh, Malik Muhammad gave me the name Hannibal. So that's where the name Hannibal came from. So, so it's based off the North African general? Yeah, it's based off of um, general, general Hannibal of Carthage. And um, if you know the history of General Hannibal, he was the last African to ever challenge Rome and challenge challenge any any standing white nation. And so that's where he got that from. So that was actually a given name. Hannibal was. Yeah, the, the, the streets thought you was named after after the dude on the movies that was. Yeah, that people was. People's faces <laughs> off and eating, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. A lot of people think that's where the name Hannibal came from, or even the semblance, but no, that's not where that came from. Was there ever a little Hannibal? No, nah, there's never been a little Hannibal. Never. It was a lot of people tried. Like, there was a lot of people wanted to be Lil U and all the other stuff, but it was, it was, I overstood how, how, how hard a task it would be for somebody to even try to carry that name, so. The ones that tried to carry it, it wasn't that I didn't want them to or I disliked them, it was just, it was a lot to carry right now. It's even hard for my sons to, to even try to be related to the name, so they kind of put a twist on it, and that's when you hear them say, Yui instead of Lil U or Baby U, it's more like they uh, um, they, they put the Yui on it, they Lil Yui and Baby Yui and stuff like that, but the name was it, it, it was, it was a lot that went with it. And then what we was going through, in the early 80s and the 70s is, is different than what they're going through today in these days and time. I just turned 50 years old last November. We had a big party, we had a big shame day, all the homies came out, uh, the ones that could make it. Um, it was fun. I'm shoot, happy to make it. So where, are you, where were you born at, bro? I was actually born on 81st and Hoover. You know, that's what's funny. I was born at 81st in Hoover. I went to Elamere Elementary School. My uncle, my uncle bought a house right here on Arlington in um, 70. I think it was 1970. He was the first one to come west. Because at the time I was born, 
it wasn't a lot of blacks being able to come past Western. And if you was coming past Western, it was um, it was a, it was problems. So my uncle was the first one. He was working. At, he had got a job working at seven at Seven Up, and then he bought a house on Arlington in like seven. I want to say, I, I want to say for sure it was seventy, not sixty nine. And so when he came west, he bought some duplexes. And so that my uncle moved in one one side, and my auntie moved in the other one. And so it was kind of where my mother and them being from the, from the south, from Mississippi, it was the one place that everybody could come. And then with Van Ness Park being right across the street from the park, we would have like family gatherings, like every Sunday or, or Saturday, you know, being all in from the south, they, we would all meet and we'd come to the park and the park was right across the street. It was even before they had this big gate that they have now. It was a little bitty gate you could run across and Jack the Box is right there. We would run across from there and I mean, the whole, our whole family would be here. The, the different lanes and the Hoovers never tried to recruit you? No, nah, well, I mean, it was so, I was so strong. It was, it was, it wasn't even a question where I was going to be from. I, it was, um, like I said, 13 brothers, 13, I had 10 uncles. And it was 12 of us that was first cousins. And Slim and, um, Big Slim and Lil Slim lived in one duplex. Uh, Benzo and Capone lived in the, in, the, in, the, in the other duplex next door to each other. My other cousin, Tim and Gary, lived in the 50s. And I had, and, uh, um, then it was, I had more cousins, Alvin and sent them. They lived right around the corner, so my whole family was right here. It wasn't no question I was gonna be from this side. I mean, no matter where I lived at. Her cousin was Alvin, he was the first, he's, he's the first American to ever win a, 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 a Kempo or a fighting title outside the United States. He was the first one. He won a full contact title, Alvin Prouder, at 17 in uh, Japan. He flew from Japan, went over there and won it, first time ever. So martial arts been in our life I've been, I've been taking martial arts since I was eight years old. We first took it from um, from BKF. No, we actually started, BKF started right after when Muhammad and the rest of the brothers, who was Steve Sanders at the time, started. We was going on Crenshaw. We was on Crenshaw on uh, 43rd, and that's where the first school was. And then um, BKF just continued to grow from there, and it's always been a part of our life. It's always been martial arts. So did you, did you attend Horseman? Yeah, I went from, I mean, my role was, first elementary school was Lymere Elementary School. That was when we stayed over there. Then from there, I think in the second and third grade, second all the way to the fifth grade, we was at 59th Street School. And then um, from 59th Street School in the sixth grade, I went to 111th. And then from 111th, we checked in the Horseman. At Horseman, I went to Horseman from the seventh grade to the eighth grade. So I went to Horseman in 79. And so 79 was when we first, that's when the eight trades in the rolling 60s used to still get, get along in 79. Actually, I was the first person to get jumped by the eight trade gangsters in 1979, walking home from school from, we was walk, I because I, I granted, I used to live on 108th and Figueroa, so we caught the bus from um, Western and um, from Western and Florence, we catch the bus to Figueroa, and then from Figueroa, I catch the bus up to um, my mother's house. I mean, on 108th and Figueroa. So I think what it was a 79, it's when Mumbles, no, yeah, all, my big homie Mumbles had got into tour with Boosie over some stuff that went over with some females. And um, they had got into it that over the weekend. So come Monday, when we got to school, I'm only in the seventh grade. We hearing like the sixties and they trade is supposed to fight. And so we 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 hearing that it's supposed to be a fight in the front of school. So mom dropped me off, all of us get together, we run to we run to the back of the school. We run to the back of the school with no fight. We run to the front of the school with no fight. So basically it went like that for like all day long. You had a bunch of dudes. We was the little rolling sixties and a, a red and them, chili red and all them was the, the little A Trey gangsters and we had like maybe four or five dudes from Hoover that was going to, was going to Horseman at the time. And I think it wasn't until maybe that Wednesday that we actually did have a fight that happened with the homies in A-Trades. So after that fight, 
that Thursday I was walking home from school. Me, me and my older sister, and uh, me and my older sister and her friend was walking home from school. And so, who was it? Sidewinder, Sidewinder against the Brown. Opie was on the bike, because Opie was the first one to steal on me. We come, we walk from school, so Opie get off on me. Now granted, I'm, I'm a little dude. I'm only in the seventh grade. I'm really not even in the shit like that at the time. So when Opie get off on me, I get down on Opie. First, Opie and them couldn't fuck with me. I mean, couldn't, couldn't match me hand to hand. Like I told you already, was squabbling was what we do. Fighting was, was what we did. And Opie was way little than I was anyway. So Opie get off on me. I'm all Opie here on the bike. And then um, Chili Red, Big Chili Red. It was Big Chili Red, Gangsta Brown. Gangsta Brown them never did nothing, but it was more all the dudes who was, I was in the seventh grade, them was like eighth and ninth grade going, cause you still went to high school in the ninth grade at that time. So we all in the streets fighting and I'm trying to kill my sister. My sister making it worse, cause she won't just, I'm telling her like, I'm squabbling with all these dudes. They getting the best of me, I'm, on me, I'm by myself. So I'm telling my sister, come on, she's still arguing and, and, and like, I'm like, man, she making it worse. Really like, let's go. And I can't leave her. She arguing with these dudes, what girls do. And I'm squabbling with these dudes. So they get the best of me, lump me up a little bit. So I go home, I'm walking back. So I walk, instead of going, catching the bus going home, we turn around and we walk back to the hood. So now my part of the neighborhood at the time is I live on the other side of the tracks. So basically, when we walk past Horse Man coming back, I see Mad Dog and them gambling and shooting dice. Mad Dog, JD, and a couple of the homies. I was telling them what happened, and they get up in arms. They run up that way. I'm like, man, fuck, I'm going to get, I'm going to go get my homies. Just, just we from North Side of Track. So at the time, it wasn't really a difference, but it was like, on this side of the tracks, we didn't really know no A Track gangsters. Like we grew up knowing VNGs. It was kind of a separation. And uh, um, so when I came back and told Mump and all, uh, Big Mumpy, Big Roach, J-Bone, and all the homies from our side, what had happened, me, c -Dog, um, um, uh Sean Cook, and all us, now we all grew up and went to Horse Man together. We all grew up on this side of the track. So the homies was like, we going back up there. So come that Thursday, when, come that Friday when the homies came up to Horse Man, we came with a totally different, a totally different attitude and a different mentality. So it wasn't like the homies that came from our side of the tracks didn't have no relationship with their trades. Like we didn't know them, we didn't have no relationship with them, we didn't have nothing. And that's to my homies who didn't ever go to Horse Man. So when we pull up at Horse Man that Friday, we beating everything down. So the homies come, we ain't, we don't care where you from. We, the homies is just on one. Like y'all, you know, y'all done got on the homies and. So basically, it was a, it was a, it was it was totally different. The dudes who didn't know it was coming got it. The dudes who didn't know what size you was from got it. If you was going that way, we was giving it to you. Period, point blank. So that kind of set in motion what later happened on with Tyrone getting killed. So I think we can't. So I got suspended because of that incident. When we came back to, when I came back to school, that probably about I got suspended like two days. We came back to school that Wednesday. That's when all the big homies had gotten into it. That's when John L., uh, uh, all the dudes from A-Trey and all the dudes from 60s that met. And they was like, well, the big, the little homie and them feel like they still wanna, they still wanna get some stuff off their chest. Cause I didn't get to get the dudes I wanted to get. So we had a meeting to meet their trades to fight their trades. A-Trey's in the 60s was gonna fight at the, um, behind the dentist, it used to be a dentist office in the back on Florence and Western. So we all went up there to go fight. And they was like, most of them dudes like, man, I ain't trying to get down with him. So John L was like, nah, man, just pick who you want to fight. And these niggas don't want to fight, just fuck when I'm up. So anyway, make a long story short, we, I'm beating these dudes up and the homies like, man, nah, so Slim them all want to get in and we all getting in. So every Friday, so then the police the security came. And so every Friday that became like our routine. We'd meet up there and fight. The A-Trays, the the Hoovers, every Friday we would meet at the same spot and fight. So then that one Friday, that's when Tyrone got killed. When we was supposed to meet, and that's when um, that infamous night, that, I mean infamous day that happened, that was um, March 3rd, that was March 3rd, 1979. And if you transfer March 3rd backwards, that's the eighth month, that's the eighth month, third day. 
that the homie Tyrone got killed. 